Well, you know what they say, while the boss is away, work becomes a holiday. Well, that's stretching it a bit around here, but I have to say that I'm having some fun as summer is in full swing and Father Joe has begun his sabbatical, not due to the fact that Father Joe is away for the summer, but because of the many things I'm doing this summer and something that is very near and dear to my heart. Twice a week for a couple hours until school resumes, I get to hang out at summer camp at the local YMCA. I must be honest, sometimes it's hard to tell the kids and counselors, sorry, I can't stay any longer today. I have to get to church to do some other work. And as I was reflecting back on this week, I recalled one substantial reason why I've always had a love for camp. Because it's simple. Camp is simple. Campers simply come to have some fun throughout the whole day, doing many different activities, swimming and canoeing and playing games. Counselors simply get to love on those children and look after them as part-time parental units. And while I'm there this summer as a kind of a summer camp chaplain, I simply have the wonderful opportunity to hang with these kids and counselors. This last week, besides getting to do a little bit of Bible teaching about who God is and what it means to know him and follow him in in today's day, I also got to play dodgeball. I haven't played dodgeball for 10 years. I also learned a new game as we sat around a simple fake fire campfire, and I had the pleasure of fielding some really good questions about who God is as I hung out with some of the kids. Simple and very satisfying. Now, maybe summer camp is not your idea of simple. So what is it that you do that others might see as maybe daunting, but for you it's pretty simple? Grilling out, baking, knitting, golf, algebra, video games, any kids here or adults, navigating the internet, running a business. What is simple for you? As people find out our skills and talents, over time we might even tend to be remembered by the very things that we find easy in life, things that come naturally to us or that we have practiced and enjoyed doing. Now, when it comes to being God's people in the world around us, living out Jesus' teachings, simple might not be the first word that comes to mind. Over and over again, when we read the New Testament, living the Christian life can seem everything but simple. Think for a moment about Paul's words in Corinthians to, about love. We often hear at weddings. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. There doesn't seem to be anything simple about trying to uphold Paul's words in marriage all the time, or even in life itself. At times, the Christian life we read about in studying the Holy Scriptures may seem a little daunting, perhaps unattainable to us, but God still calls us to persevere in trying to live that life, trying to love others as God has called us to love them. And Jesus, as Jesus and the apostles modeled it for us and taught us in the Bible. And the more and more we can simplify just to live out Jesus' grace and love among us, the better off we will be, and the more our life together as the body of Christ will flourish. I don't know if you've heard, but simple is in, says authors Tom Rayner and Eric Greiger in their book, Simple Church. They say simple is in and complexity is out, out of style at least, they say. Ironically, people are hungry for simple because the world has become much more complex. The amount of information accessible to us is continually increasing. The ability to interact with the entire world is now possible. Technology is consistently advancing at a rapid pace. The result is a complicated world 
with complex and busy lives. And in the midst of complexity, people want to find simplicity. They long for it, seek it, pay for it, even dream it. Simple is in, simple works. People respond to simple. The simple revolution has begun. Simple Church is a relatively new book, and I believe St. John's Vestry have, have studied it and worked through it at one time or another as they think about church. But the concept is ancient. Even in Jesus' day, he knew simple was better. And this evening's gospel lesson leads us to believe that, yes, the life of a Christian will flourish if lived simply. We see in Mark's gospel lesson that Jesus is sending out his disciples with a simple mission and simple message. Pack lightly, speak plainly, and live openly. The disciples were simply to stay with those who would listen and receive the good news. And when they came upon those who would not listen, they were to shake off their dust, off their shoes, and move to some, some other place that would listen. It was simply by virtue of their presence among the people and obedience to God that, that change among the populace and future discipleship would come. We also see from Mark's testimony that the disciples had an amazing results from their steadfast faith in the Lord and Savior, saying they cast out demons and anointed many that were sick and healed them. The disciples had a simple mission with a simple message of repentance and love and their results simply amazing. Now, why is this? First of all, the message is simple. The message they were taking was simple. The good, the good news they were taking out wasn't hard. Before we were born, God loved us, and he showed us this love through his son, Jesus Christ. Simple. And no matter how bad, broken, or complicated we have made our lives or the lives around us, God, through Christ, longs to know us and to make us new. For Romans says, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. God has given the best gift to the world, to know him intimately and to enjoy him forever through his son, Jesus Christ. All we have to do is accept that gift, trusting and believing that Jesus is who he said he is and that he will come again to take us to be with him where he is simple message. Second, once we are his, God has a simple plan for our lives, to listen and to obey. We heard in our second lesson from St. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians that Paul was given some kind of thorn in his flesh, which he figured was given to him in order to keep him from being too elated. Paul became con content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, calamities, all for the sake of Christ. And Paul says he asked the Lord three times to take this ailment away, yet God never did, but spoke into his heart saying, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. Paul came to know in his heart that what ailed him did for a purpose, and he continued to live for his master, knowing that whenever he was weak in the flesh, as he relied on his faith, simply listening and being obedient. Life, even in the midst of trial and hardship, became simple. Paul learned that in his weaknesses, when we turn to Christ, in him he was made strong. We are called, as was St. Paul and all who believe, to live for God's greater glory as his children, simply listening and being obedient. Whether you're a business person, a priest, a retiree, a teacher, a parent, a grandparent, a nurse, a manager, a student, whoever you are. As Christians, we are to live lives each and every day to offer a praise to God through our faithfulness to his call on our lives as his children. As St. Peter says, you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare his praises and him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Third, our best work living in the kingdom of God is simple work. God does call his children to build great churches, 
to go off to far off lands, sometimes to give up all that they have to be in an abbey and have a life of study and prayer. But for most of God's people, the greatest work we can ever do is to simply live out God's message of love and grace in our ordinary day-to-day lives. For God says in Deuteronomy, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. These commandments that I give to you are to be upon your hearts. Impress them to your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down, and when you get up. Being a Christian doesn't need to be a daunting thing. It gets easier and easier, even becomes simple when we remember that it's God's message, that it's God's plan, that it's God's work that we're invited to and called to be about. And very simply, with him, all things are possible. And and in all things, he is in control. He is the one who gives the grace and power needed to accomplish what he has called us to do and to be in this life. It's great to be known by others for the things that we are really good at in life that comes simply. As followers of our Lord Jesus Christ, may we strive also to be known by simple acts of love, of grace, of faith, all through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That we may convey to those outside these walls the same message that Jesus came to simply live among us, to love us, to die on the cross, for us, that we would be saved. Amen.